Oh man. Don't you hate when that happens? Hi everybody, this is The Lost Boy with another repair video. Or more accurately in this case, a refurb video. If you enjoy this video, feel free to like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell if you'd like to see new videos when they come out. So here we have one of the common problems that occurs with the original NES system. Pop in a game, press the power button, and this is what you get. The time-honored tradition has been to remove the game, blow forcefully in the bottom of the cartridge, reinsert, and try again. As it turns out, this is really just more for luck and wishful thinking than anything else. Actually, what happens is, the up and down motion of the cartridge tray over time causes the pin connector to loosen. And here we have another common problem for the NES, the blinking light of death. Again, most times people will just try the blow trick. Really what you're doing is you're readjusting the game in the cartridge slot, which many times has the effect of solidifying the connection of the pins. With the blinking light of death, it's actually caused by a lockout chip that Nintendo included in the NES in order to prevent the production of unauthorized or bootleg games. If the connection between the cartridge and the lockout chip is not perfect, the NES assumes that you're up to shenanigans and continuously resets the machine until it recognizes the lockout chip, which is also called the 10 NES chip. In today's video, I'll be refurbishing the original pin connector to get rid of all of those corrupted graphics and disabling the lockout chip to prevent the blinking light issue. So just a regular Phillips screwdriver, go ahead and remove the six screws from the bottom. Careful you don't lose any screws. Most NESs have a top shield as well as a bottom shield. This one doesn't. There's normally more screws than this to remove, but that's okay. Notice, out of the six screws holding down the cartridge tray, two are longer and four are the same size as all the other screws. Make sure you take note of which holes the long screws go in. Here you can see the longer screw goes in the left hole and the shorter one goes in the right. Again, the short screw goes on the end, the long screw goes next to it. And make sure you don't get those two long screws mixed up with the rest. Go ahead and remove all the remaining screws.
Now you can go ahead and slide the cartridge tray slightly forward and then lift the front up and slide everything out. Carefully lift the board up. See how it's still connected by some wires? You've got two controller ports and the main power port for the motherboard. Go ahead and carefully remove these. They can be stubborn sometimes, so just be careful and take it easy. There it is. Lift off the piece of metal shielding there. And now the last thing is to remove the pin connector from the board. It just slides off. There's my little pal Pixel, just supervising. Now, while you're in here, you may as well take a toothbrush or something and get everything nice and clean. Here I'm using an eraser to clean any carbon off of where the pin connector sits. This is non-abrasive and works very well for cleaning. It's important after using the eraser to give a brisk scrubbing with a rag and shine the surface up as well as you can. You'll see on your cloth a lot of carbon coming off. Just make sure it's nice and shiny again when you're done. Here I've taken a little piece of fabric and folded it over an old credit card. And you just gingerly insert it to clean any pieces of dirt. Now this is the actual refurb here. So basically all of these pins have sort of bent down over time. So we need to lift up each one very carefully. So you take something small and just slip it in behind each pin and gently, gently pry up. You definitely don't want to go too far with this. It's going to make your games a lot harder to put in. And if you go too far, I'm told you can actually damage your games. So just lift them so they're sticking up a little higher than they were before and everything should be good. It takes a while to get all of them, but it's definitely worth it when your games load up every time after. Here we have the lockout chip, if I can get some focus. There it is. Apparently the number on the top is the same on all the different boards. The number on the bottom is different. So the, the lockout chip will always say 3193A on top. On the bottom it's going to be different every time. On the bottom row, you want to count four pins in from the left. The leftmost one is hidden here. So it's going to be the pin directly under the numbers 33. 
This is the part that always makes me super nervous. I hate cutting stuff on printed circuit boards. It makes me so nervous. So just be really careful that you cut only the fourth pin from the left and don't cut anything else. Also be careful not to crush anything or, or snap off any capacitors. So unfortunately, my camera battery died for reassembly, but just go ahead and do everything I did in reverse and you should be fine. Here's a shot of two NESs. The one on the top has had the lockout chip disabled. The one on the bottom is stock. So you can see when they're both empty, the stock one on the bottom keeps resetting. The one on the top power stays on constantly. And there you go, now games work every time. Well, I hope you enjoyed this repair video. Thanks again for watching. Your comments, views, and support are greatly appreciated. Always remember your happy thought, and I'll see you next time.